السلام علیکم In our series of lectures for mechanics of machine, we are discussing the balancing and uh, currently we are on a topic of analysis of balance, analysis of unbalance. A very brief uh, overview of important things from last lecture and then we continue from there. So as we have discussed, uh, there is a possibility of unbalance in the system and that unbalance could have caused because of the manufacturing process tolerances and the system which has been explained in previous slides so now that unbalance is quite dangerous if if something is rotating and uh, it will induce a lot of vibrations in the system and of course the fatigue loading caused by the unbalance for a rotating component could cause a severe failure and reduces the life uh, considerably of the uh, component. So you have unbalance, the possibility of unbalance is always there. So what you need to do, you need to correct. But before correction, what you need, you need to analyze the unbalance you if, if I say in precise words you need to locate where you have the unbalance in the system so to do that we have gone through one of these two equations uh, you have you have already seen these equations previously in many other subjects so summation of forces needs to be zero that is the one of the requirement for the static balance and summation of moments should be zero so that's more like equilibrium straight means you have the uh, dynamic unbalance you identify there and one other important thing was the inertia forces for some 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 mass when it's rotating in in some circular movement it has some inertia forces that inertia forces is basically mr omega square yeah so if you do graphic analysis you are solving through graphic analysis through vector method you can leave out the omega part what is omega omega is, is the rotating speed basically because the part is rotating at constant speed so each mass is rotating at, at the same speed so you can you can neglect omega scale so basically you are not neglecting the force the inertial force is more like a varying because of mr so that's why we consider the force analysis by just considering the MR vectors. Right. And of course, and if this is the force, then if you multiply this with the arm length. To find in the moment that we have done previously. So one of the example was solved 15.1 where the moment was basically. So if I if I go to this one the, the the force basically was m1 r1 that's the force again the force is basically if you multiply with omega scare mr omega scare is the force but we, we are not taking the omega because it will not change the direction of the omega of the, of the vector itself and it's equally participating in each vector so that's why we don't need to consider that individual parts basically all right, so that's the, the that was the force. So and then we got the moment. So moment is also just multiply the arm length, which was over here. So L1, L2, L3. OK, so these were the basically moment and force diagrams. And yes, so from here, what you have done, you construct you construct a polygon. So polygon is like you construct the diagram and uh, use head to tail method. So first vector is from his head. You have another vector from that. You have another vector. Then the vector which combines. The head of the last vector to the tail of first vector. It is this vector is the resultant. That's the sum basically, but at the same time it is making a closed loop. 
that's why in this book the theory of machine and mechanism this is being considered as a polygon so you construct so you find this resultant by connecting the head of last vector to the tail of first vector this is basically the sum and that sum is basically is giving you the opportunity to construct a complete polygon so for example this is a moment polygon and this is the force polygon which had analysis from this this example so you can you can you can uh, visit back the previous lecture to to have uh, a review of this problem which we have done in last lecture so we will continue now to example 15.2 so this is also from the same book theory of machine and mechanism uh, by shigley so figure represents a rotating system that has idealized for illustrative purpose so this spring this is the mass system is idealized diagram this is like not the actual one so it's been just to make it simplified version actually so you see what you have you have a and b they are the bearings and this is the whole shaft which is rotating at 100 radians per second and uh, you got three weights within the system the locations are given important to understand the axis for example this the so this is the x axis where the along which the rotation is happening this is yz so all masses are basically in the yz plane basically so you, if you see carefully this w1 this is the weight one this is perpendicularly up just in a y direction weight two which is in the if you look carefully this is in the negative y and positive z direction so this is negative y because it's going downward so y upward is positive this is the convention whenever you are drawing a sketch or, or you want to show the coordinate system <clears throat> you just show the positive values so positive y is in this direction of course the y is negative downward so you don't need to write but it is like that z is in this direction outward is uh, outward of the page is a positive and of course in the other direction is a negative in that direction so now you imagine this w2 is basically in the direction of z which is positive in the direction of y which is negative so if you why i'm saying so because if i find the component of this weight so it will make triangle so it which has one of the component in this direction which is positive z direction and the other component is in the negative direction y direction so that's that's the case now this w3 is in other coordinates so basically it's not towards so z is not this way z is basically rather this way so that's why we have this angle and y is still negative so in this case you got z negative as well as y negative for w3 so third page and the respective angles are also given okay so back to uh, question so that has idealized for illustrative purpose a weightless shaft that is supported in bearing a b rotates with an angular velocity you see the the velocity is also shown in form of vector so just imagine when it says i as a unit vector means this rotation along the x-axis basically so that's why we have this one so three mass particle with weights w1 as a two ounces w2 one ounce and w3 is 1.5 ounce so this is like british system so we'll see slight conversion uh, later on so these three weights are given and connect to the shaft and rotate with it causing unbalance so these three masses which are just varying in yz plane are causing a unbalance so what you need to do determine the magnitude and orientation of the bearing reaction at a so you just need to find out 
what are the reaction forces caused at A and B? Because that's that's crucial. I, I, I discussed previously, if you have unbalance in the system, it causes a forces on the bearing because bearing is the one which has to support the shaft. If the shaft has unbalance, so that unbalanced force will transfer towards the bearing. And of course, if there is a unbalance, the probability of the failure of the bearing is really high. So this is one of the step we want to identify how much forces is been caused on the bearing basically. And the other dimensions are given here. For example, the A, this length, which is one inch for for mass one, B is for mass two. Uh, and uh, yeah, so so this is B, this is yeah, A and B are, are the distances. And then you got radial dimensions as well. So R1 is the distance away from the shaft center, which is R1. And you have R2 and R3 as well, same way from other masses. All right, let's see how to solve it. So the very first case, uh, the inertial force, right? So this this example we are not solving through the graphic analysis. We are rather doing through through, through the system of equations to solve. So that's why we are finding the inertia forces, right? So you have m1 r1 omega square. That's the that's the way you determine the the force. So for each case we have, we have mass M1, which is two ounce. R1 is three inch that's given. So R1 is three inch and Omega scare is 100 radians per second. So we have slight conversion over here. So two ounce because we want to find out the force in pounds. So two ounce divided by 16 ounce per pound. So in one pound you have 16 ounces. So that's what that's why you do. This, uh, this conversion basically. And uh, then you got this 100 radians per second. You also convert this into uh, to convert to the pound 386 inch per second scale. So this is like a acceleration conversion, uh, which is meters per second scale basically. So this is this is to do that one basically because you got this one, this one as a acceleration basically. M R omega scale is acceleration. If you, you you consider it, this is A, M is there. So according to Newton law, M A is basically the force. So our omega scale is the combined. This one is a acceleration. So this is when you multiply three into hundred. This is acceleration, uh, hundred scale basically. So to convert this into to for the pound conversion, you need to divide 386 inch per second scale. So if you if you Google this one, you will see how this conversion is working basically. So this is one of the way you can you can uh, convert acceleration basically. Uh, yeah, so you got uh, 9.72 pound because of mass one because of mass two this much force and because of mass three this is uh, 6.07 pound uh, yeah so it's a similar conversion in each case uh, as i said the first part this 16 is basically to, to convert the ounces uh, because we want uh, you, you would know that you got the the mass can be measured in pounds as well and as a force as well so this one is a is a mass and this one is the is to do with the forces basically. All right, so I, I, I will just suggest you go through a little bit about uh, uh, the conversion units basically for British system and you will you will get some idea why we have this 386 and 16 as well. All right, so once we know these uh, these uh, uh, forces because of each now we want to find out the components. So from there you will find out what are the what are the components at the at the each each load basically. All right. So this was uh, yeah. So this is again written. So 6.07 being determined. The three forces are each parallel to y z plane can be written in a vector form. Yeah. So this is now the important part. So F1 you just see that because this W1, we just found 9.72 9 pounds. So, there. so that's the force we determined. 
so you see this mass this weight is in y direction so if you want to write out in the in the direction here 9.72 you can write as a angle so angle is basically now we, because everything is being done in a yz plane so the reference angle is zero so from here so this is the y line also so that's why the angle is zero right so you can write this in a vector form like that because it's in j y is always j z is k so you're writing this 9.72 is associated with the j basically it's nothing with nothing else but just with j so that's its weight now the second one that will, that will give you a little bit more idea so you got 3.24 pound right that's the resultant force you found you found from here 3.24 and uh, so from here you can find out what will be basically the the components basically so 3.24 is being act on 120 degree so again, we are measuring from positive y axis because you see this was measured at zero degree. So this was positive x axis. So you can consider you got this one 30 degree, right? So if this is 30, let me right here. Yeah, so this is 30 degrees so from positive y axis all the way from here this angle is 120 y from here to here is 90 and then because out of 90 you got 30 over here so you got 60 so 60 plus 90 so or or else if you yeah if you look this one this way Yeah, so total is. This. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, so what we have, yeah, this is not this angle. So we have this angle thirty, right? This angle thirty. I, I thought this, this, this one is angle thirty. No. So this angle is thirty. So ninety plus thirty is one twenty. So that's why we have, right? Three point two four is the magnitude, and the angle associated with this mass is hundred twenty. Now, how to convert this? to this vector form is, is very simple basically because you got uh, two set of equations. What's the two set of equations? So magnitude is always, uh, so you know that in the Pythagoras theorem, so what you have, so X component, you got X component square, X square, uh, yeah, so X square plus Y square basically. Just a second, please. 